Hey everyone, good afternoon. I about said good morning. Good afternoon. Happy Sunday. Today is February 13th, also known as the day before Valentine's Day, also known this year as Super Bowl Sunday. Super excited about that. Can't wait. We're going to do a Super Bowl party with my family and then some of um, our really good friends that are might as well be family. So excited about that. We do it every year. Um, so it doesn't even matter who's playing. It's just fun to get together and watch it and try and, you know, we pick who we want to win and see, see what happens. So, all right. So today is Psalm 7 and I've got a little bit more, um, in this to talk about. So I'm excited. So let's dive right in. It says, Lord, my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me right there off the bat taking refuge in God how how blessed are we that we can take refuge in God that right there to me is just it's one of those things that like we know as Christians but when you truly think about it it kind of blows your mind that God allows us the opportunity to take refuge in him. For they will tear me apart like a lion and rip me to pieces with no one to rescue me. Lord my God, if I have done this and there is guilt on my hands, if I have repaid my ally with evil or without cause have robbed my foe, then let my enemy pursue me and overtake me. Let him trample my life to the ground and make me sleep in the dust. So... When I read this, my first thought is, why would you, basically, why would you say, God, if I've done this, let me, let my enemy overtake me. Like, who says that? And so then I thought, you know, David had to have a lot of confidence in himself that he had done no, he hadn't done anything that would make God turn his enemies against him to where his enemies would overtake him because he said if any of this has happened let my enemy pursue me and overtake me so you know that David had to have a lot of confidence that God wasn't going to to say that so I don't know that I could have enough confidence in myself to say hey God if I've done something wrong to an enemy or to a foe, or whatever, let them overtake me. Let, let me be trampled to the ground. I don't have enough confidence because I know that I fail every day. So it amazes me that, that, that David said that. It says, Arise, Lord, in your anger. Rise up against the rage of my enemies. Awake, my God, decree justice. Let the assembled peoples gather around you while you sit enthroned over them on high. Let the Lord judge the peoples. Vindicate me, Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity, O Most High. Bring to an end the violence of the wicked and make the righteous secure. You, the righteous God, who probes minds and hearts. My shield is God Most High, who saves the upright in heart, God is the righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. God is the almighty judge. God can also be our shield. Think of the protection that we can have by saying that God is our shield. Is there any better protection? And I, I don't believe there is. God can be our shield. And let me tell you, I do not want anyone else but God being my protection. I'm just going to say it straight out. I There's nobody better that I can think to be my shield than God. Then he also talks about God being a righteous judge. 
we're all going to have to stand before God at some point. We are all going to stand before God and he's going to judge us according to our lives. There's no way out of that. Whether you die young, whether you live your whole life and die at the age of 100, whether God comes back and takes us all home, at some point, we are all going to have to stand before God. And God is going to judge us. But he's going to judge us righteously. He's going to say, now you did this and this and this wrong. But then he's going to say, is your name in this book? Is your name in this Lamb's book of life? Did you try every day? to do better and yes I know you failed yes I know you're a sinner but did you work every day to do better than you did yesterday to be better to be a better person to be a better friend to be a better Christian if he does not relent he will sharpen his sword he will bend and string his bow he has prepared his deadly weapons he makes ready his flaming arrows. Whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. Whoever digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit they have made. The trouble they cause recoils on them. Their violence comes down on their own heads. So, what I take from just those verses, those, those few verses right there, is, and I, I can say this, I'm going to say this from a teacher standpoint, that the truth will always catch up. We tell our kids that. The truth will always find you because they can lie to us and tell us that they've done something when they haven't as far as work goes. They can pull the truth and tell us, oh, no, I didn't do that. They started it. I was just defending myself. But we tell them the truth is always going to come out. Because almost always there's someone else that saw what happened. As far as, you know, doing your own homework, I say this a lot. Guys, you can cheat off of each other all you want on homework, but when it comes test day, if you haven't done your homework, I'm going to know it because you're not going to know how to do stuff on the test. The choices that we make will always come to light. The truth of what we do and what we say will always come to light. If you dig yourself into a hole with lies that you tell, you're going to get to a point where you just can't get out of it. You're going to get to a point that you're at the bottom and as far as you can dig and there's nothing else to do but come clean. Because people are, the people around you are going to find out. Especially if they know you well enough to know that stuff isn't matching up. It's always going to come to light. So why, I say, and I say this to my students all the time, why would you put yourself in a hole and lie about it instead of just coming clean at the beginning? Because we tell them all the time, if you will just come clean at the beginning and tell us the truth, yeah, you might get in trouble, but you'll do your punishment and it'll be over with. If you dig yourself into a hole and then come clean, after you've told lie and lie and lie again and over again and then come clean, not only are you going to get in trouble, 
but people around you are going to have a really hard time trusting you again. Because you dug yourself so far down. So why not just come clean at the beginning and get it over with? Verse 17, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. We can always give thanks to God regardless of the situation. We can always give thanks to God. You may be in the darkest valley you've ever walked, but there's still something that you can give thanks to God for. There's always, always, always something that we can say, Lord, thank you. Believe me, I've walked through some tough valleys. I've had days where it's like there's nothing good around me. But even on those days, there is still something to say thank you, Jesus, about. Today, I encourage you to look around for this stuff that you can say thank you, Jesus, for. Because you may be struggling. I don't know everybody's situation. But you might be struggling. But what can you say thank you Jesus about? Because there is something. Maybe it's just thank you Jesus for sun. The sun came up today. Maybe it's just thank you Jesus that I have food and water. Thank you, Jesus, that I got a good night's sleep last night. I don't know, but there's always something to say thank you, Jesus, about. So that's what I encourage you to do today is to look for those opportunities. Everyone go out, have a great Sunday. Have a great week, and as always, go be the example.